that music? Do you hear that music? I'm pretty sure there isn't a single person in the gaming community who wouldn't instantly recognize that tune. And of course, that tantalizing tune comes from the illustrious Halo series. Yeah! Pew, pew, pew! Work, work, work. Oh, oh, teeny! Uh. More specifically, the original Halo, or otherwise known as Halo. Come at evolve. It's a bit redundant, isn't it? I mean, I sure hope it's evolved. It's only set in space, for God's sake. And to understand the game better, I'm just gonna look at everyone else's completely valid opinions. Did, did I just internet? Halo, like any game of popularity, has its fair share of naysayers named that. Halo is some of video games trashiest trash to scuzz up our trashy dump. But I've always wondered where the hate comes from or whether or not it's even warranted. It's important to mention that in no way do I reject the opinions of other gamers. After all, we all have our specific tastes. But when people say they don't like, oh, I don't know, a pineapple for instance, I like to hear the specifics about what they don't like. Much of what I found on both sides of the argument on Halo were horrendously unhelpful. Most of the arguments being boiled down to, Halo's better than COD, or if you don't like Halo, it's because you like a big fat cod in your hands. Not really the best of arguments, huh? And I know what you're saying. Why are you reviewing this game? It's not even old. And you are right. This game is too old to be relative and too new to be retro. So what the funk is it? I don't know. That's a question for another day, my sweets. But now it's time to go back and play Halo. And when I play Halo, I don't mean the anniversary version. Don't get that jazz out of here. No, we're going back to the original, the one from 2001. Back when this was advanced technology. Look at it. Which reminds me, remember that scrumptious song that was playing from 10 seconds ago? Of course you do, you're a smart champ. Well, I need to pop my gusher early and say this has one of the best soundtracks put to a game. There are a few games that have such a wide variety of music that helps further the experience in the way that you can't even see. Because it's music. The game's soundtrack is by far one of its strongest assets, and I might be as bold to say that the entire series benefits from the quality music that Old McDonald produced. Each track carries a strong emotion, and simply listening to it, I get goose pimples all up on my body. Woo! Oh, Donald, you dog! And personally, I think that music and sound design is something that many games overlook. But what better way to start you off? That intro song preps the player to get ready for some sort of adventure. Something with religious significance. Something extraordinary. Something mysterious. Yeah, this music's so fucking good! Oh, Martin. You sexy son of a bitch. Uh, well, well, okay. Maybe not sexy. But your music is. Okay, next. Now, as far as the game goes, the beginning tutorial is fairly immersive as it does use its intro as a time of helplessness in order to let the player get better acquainted with the controls, as well as showcase the severity of the current threat. Right. Right to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe not so much in the last one. Since you're given no gun, your only choice is to run to the bridge and watch the fights around you. This helps serve as a glimpse of what you'll be dealing with without being able to interact with them quite yet. Good job, Bungie, baby, have a treat! It is once you receive your first weapon that you get to begin your journey of a xenocidal rampage. Yay, slaughter. And here is my first problem with the game. What the hell? The legendary. <laughs> get it? It's a Halo reference. Pistol. Now, I'm sure I'm gonna get smited for speaking against the holy pistol. However, there's a reason this gun got nerfed in later games. Probably because there's no other reason to use any other gun in the entire game. Halo doesn't necessarily have the largest roster of weapons. Actually, there are only eight usable weapons total in the campaign, and by no means is that a bad thing. If anything, it makes it easy to have each weapon have a purpose. Each weapon serves its own little niche. However, this little turd is so overpowered that it makes all the other weapons almost irrelevant. If you're skilled enough, you can kill any shielded target with a few shots. Its damage output makes it a particularly effective vehicle killer, taking banshees and ghosts out with a clip or two. The zoom feature makes an essential mini sniper, but with better short range combat. And don't even get me started on hunters! Seriously, why would they allow that? Bungie, did you eat your tree? No. You ungrateful little grunt. Oh, I don't feel bad. I know it sort of made it enjoyable, and it's a staple weapon of the franchise, but even Bungie themselves stated that the pistol wasn't intended on being that strong. It was in fact a last minute coding change in order to make the pistol feel a little more effective. But it sort of jumped the gun a little. You see what I did? So, whatever, maybe Halo CE Pistol is your guilty pleasure. But you know what mine is? The Mission 343 Guilty Spark, am I right, am I right? 
<laughs> Dear God, what have I become? You see, a big argument against Halo is that it's a simple run and gun game, but I would beg to differ, and this mission is a massive reason why Halo is not only considered a great FPS, but also one that tells a neat little story. Until this mission, you've only encountered the Covenant, which at this point you might be thinking there isn't much the game can offer. You've seen all the baddies, you've witnessed all the weapons and the vehicles, and yet you still want to be surprised. You want the game to continue to throw you for a loop. And this mission will stimulate your needs. The beginning levels of Halo for the most part consist of go here and exterminate there. The game keeps the player involved with new environments along with new enemies, but the game didn't show its hand in the first mission of the game. So what could Guilty Spark possibly do to draw you back in? Sure, you do some gunning, and I do believe there's some running involved. However, this is the first level with an eerie setting, making it pretty clear that something is particularly wrong, if not obvious due to the crash ships everywhere. And yet, the level essentially starts with you immediately shooting hostiles. You'd think that's how the rest of the mission would go, right? But once you enter the facility, you might notice the pace of the game changes completely. There are almost no enemies to calm your bloodlust with. This is the moment in the game which allows the player to breathe. Aside from the brief firefight you had outside the facility, a good amount of the level lacks any sort of enemy to shoot. For once, the player isn't slaughtering aliens by the dozen, because someone has already done the slaughtering for you. This is what makes the player feel on edge. The whole time you've been on the front lines of the action, but for once, you're late to the party. And now instead of being the killer, you're the detective. Where once you just sort of had to follow the organized arrows and corridors, now you have to use the chaotic routes by climbing boxes and room structures to get where you need to go. Quite literally, the entire structure of the game is crumbling around you. So not only does this level serve as good gameplay, but it also creates a new sort of tension and intrigue for the story. Okay. I've been given a nice pet here and a spank there on the cheeks of little Halo. Something has to give, right? And left you are. Halo's campaign is fairly unique for a plot about basic space marines, but let's not get too hasty because Halo isn't without a reference or, you know, 50. You see, dear friends, as much as I'd like to defend Halo, there's something I can't truly justify without raising an eyebrow or two. Or perhaps three on it. We're screwed! One thing that is quite the glaring issue is how painfully uncanny it. Halo and the classic action thriller film Aliens are to one another. It's just everywhere! Characters, vehicles, weapons, armor, plot, almost everything in the game seems to have derived from that movie, which, okay, okay, maybe there's a few similarities. It couldn't be that bad, could it? I mean, if you want to be really broad, it is a story about marines stumbling upon a relic of an ancient civilization and awakening an extremely hostile species known as the Xeno- I, I mean, pff, the Flood. <sighs> Let's be honest, if ever there was a sci-fi space thriller to base yourself on, Aliens would be a main squeeze. I feel while heavily influenced by the film, it's by no means a carbon copy, it's just pretty similar, but if you ever need to argue that the story is unoriginal, well, I just gave you Pandora's box. Do with it what you please. Speaking of unoriginal, many people credit Halo for being the first game to use a sort of regenerating health system, or more specifically, a regenerating shield. Which is odd because it's not even close. Regenerating health was a gameplay concept created as far back as the 1980s, so why would Halo in 2001 be credited? Well, apart from being a fairly successful game to use the mechanic, it perhaps was one of the first games that had a reason to use it for its lore. After all, it's called Wombat Evolved. Oh. The game has a reason to use regenerating shields, it makes sense in the world, it's believable. Many current games use it, and it, it doesn't make sense because, believe it or not, normal soldiers don't regenerate part of their spleens in combat. But a futuristic shield? Eh, sure, why not? I can buy into that. Its use in the game allows me to stay immersed in the world because I don't have to question why it exists. Perhaps something more to consider with immersion would be how the game looks, and no, I don't mean the graphics, that would be just silly. No, I mean the design of the levels, I suppose you could call it... Level design. Oh, uh, that's a real thing here now. I feel that the development of level design is all over the place as a whole, with beautifully designed landscapes and architecture, followed by horrendously boring and repetitive interiors. The best levels all consist of outside assaults, but the level design really begins to fall flat when instigating inside. The interiors aren't nearly as beautiful to gaze upon and tend to just stick to an ugly as sin spectrum of gray. It's just not interesting to look at. I wouldn't want to be here. I'd rather go to a real library rather than this one. Not to mention most of the later levels aren't even really new levels at all. The levels, two betrayals, keys, and the maw are largely copy and paste of sections or even entire levels prior in the game, with slight alterations depending on which effects the flood had in the area. Which I can't decide whether or not I like. This can come off as a little lazy and to be quite honest, repetitive. However, it can also serve as a reminder to the player of what you were initially there to fight and how it's all changed with the emergence of the flood. So it's sort of a mix of lazy level design and decent storytelling which makes it difficult to appreciate or utterly hate. So what about all of this? The story, the music, the gameplay, was it good? 
Yes, technically speaking, the game performed many things well, exceeding standards of the time. Does it hold up? Eh, sort of. I'm not saying that if you played this game today, it'll blow your mind, but I'm also not saying that with age, the game has turned into this. There is still something pleasing about jumping out of the pelican and going right into the fray. Something about being able to see the entire ring world, the entire game. It just feels good. And that doesn't even matter. All these things listed before aren't what put Halo ahead of the crowd. Not on its own, anyway. No. As cheesy as it sounds, it was really all about the community. Bungie was very supportive of its players. Hell, why do you think things like RVB began to thrive? And Bungie was smart enough to continue and grow their community. Even in a time where online play wasn't as big as it is today, Halo's multiplayer was always a big hit, whether it was online or local play. But whether or not Bungie has continued that community effort in recent years with games like Destiny is up to you to decide. <sighs> I wouldn't know. I haven't played it. So there you go, a not-so-retro review. Now go forth and have slightly educated arguments about why you love or hate this game. Uh, or just be the fattest cod and continue your fanboy war. Hooray! Hey guy, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, it must mean you really like me, right? No? I, I understand. But hey, perhaps you can make my day a little neater by pressing that like button, or who knows, that share button sure seems unused. And if you'd like to see my junk get better, hit that subscribe button. Also, would you kindly watch my good pal Winter, Alex? Uh, that guy's stuff as well. I could give you theoretical cookies.